this is Phoenix. He's no longer with us, but he was the most gorgeous, cuddly, good-natured cat you can possibly imagine. Anyway, the reason I've got Phoenix's picture here is because I want to show you how you can make really effective outer drawing lines for complicated images without any great hassle. Now I'm using Affinity Designer on my iPad. Affinity Designer is also available for desktop. I chose to import a photograph. That's all I have done. And what I want to do is to cut out a portion of his head and put an outline around it. And I want to make it so that I could print it and then directly cut it out by using my scan and cut. Now this tutorial is designed for people who want to put printed lines around something. When it's imported, you'll see this little blue icon here, which is the vector version. What you want to do is tap on the one next to it, which is the pixel version, because a photograph is pixels, it's not vector lines. It's little tiny little pixels that make up the picture. It's underneath the bucket fill, and it's a paintbrush with a circle of dashed lines, and it's a smart selection brush tool. Now when you've selected it, you'll get a menu down on the bottom here. I've got it on additive because I might choose different parts and then add them together. If you tap on the arrows, you'll get different methods here. Okay, so you've got add and you've got subtract. If you have it on subtract, then you take things away from your mask. Pretty obvious. So I'm not even going to bother to alter anything at the moment. I'm just going to do a bit of drawing on here. Now I'm not taking any particular care over this. I'm going to give a pretty rough outside line. And if you find it hasn't caught something you want, you just go over it again and it will catch whatever it is. There we go, I'm gonna go down to this ruffle. And you can see the little marching ants. Here we go. Now at the moment I've got this line, obviously. I'm going to increase the width by going from left to right. And then I'm just going to go inside my outer line and clear up this tangle of area inside it, just to get rid of that inside mask, which I obviously don't need. And just scribble around, get rid of it, make sure I've taken that. So I have a selection now of his head. Now I deliberately chose this photograph because if you look at the colour of the cat, you look at the colour of the background, it's not got really high definition. But you'll soon see that the way that it's taken that is pretty good. I've got a pretty good cut out of the cat. Now we go to this button here on the right hand side which says refine and it gives you what you've done. And that is pretty good. Yeah, a few seconds and I got that, I'm happy. And then on the selection, underneath that it's got output. So you want output selection, or you can go output the mask, or you can have output as a new layer. And that is what I want, so I click on apply. And then you'll see up in the layers tab, which is this one here, I've now got this that is completely divorced from the background. The background is switched off. If I tap that on, you can see the background is still there, but this is my image. So now here comes the really, really clever bit. On the right hand side, there is an FX button. Click on the FX button. And just over halfway down, there's a thing called outline. So you want to tap on that and you want to tap on the outline bar and this menu will change. At the moment, I have a black color on here. I do not want a black color. I want to have a white color. So I'm gonna tap on that and I'm just going to move my sliders. You can change colors in different ways, but I've just got my sliders. Now on here, you want the pixels to reflect how wide you want your border to be. So I'm just going to go from left to right. Now, if I really overdo it, you can see this white line growing out drag it to the left, goes in, drag it out. Okay, so I'm just going to put it to 
this is about 40 pixels apparently. Okay, so I now go back up here and I can go into my layers and this is my image. And what I want to do to make sure that I preserve this, I want to make sure I'm on that layer and I want to duplicate it. But I'm also going to tap on this little layer sandwich here and go merge visible because that means whenever that is selected it's going to select the entire lot with that white line around it. So now I'm going to just tap go to duplicate. So I've got two of these. Now I'm going to work on the lower one of these two images. I'm going to go to the effects again, go to outline, tap on the outline and it's got my black and now what will happen when I slide this from left to right, I will get a black line and it goes underneath that white layer. So you only see what you allow to peep through. So you can have a very fine black line if you wish, or you can make it as thick as you want to. Right, I will just a very fine black line. So there we are, I have my image, I can send that to the printer and then the scan and cut will see those black lines and cut around it. It doesn't get much easier than that for a relatively complicated image. As you can see I've got different things here that I've put lines around. I've got a photograph of our other cat, again sadly no longer with us. He looks very grumpy but he's not, or at least he wasn't. Um, he just had that permanent expression. He was a real softy, complete and utter softy. He was a wuss. <laughs> he was a definite wuss. Um, I've got various little cartoony things I put lines around. And what I have learned, because I'm not an expert on affinity, I will use it to do what I need to do. I'm not an expert on it, okay? But what I have found, for example, you have this little helicopter that I drew. Now, when I drew it, I drew it in Procreate and I didn't put a fill on it. I just left it as a line drawing, a blank. When you import it, when you try and apply the effects to it, what it wants to do is apply the effect to all the lines that you've drawn, which you certainly don't want to do. So you want to make sure that you colour it in in white. If you don't want it to be printed any other colour, make sure you add a white fill to it. If you've got something like this and you are working in Procreate or whatever, use the alpha lock and then put a white layer underneath it because if you've got transparent colors, it's going to have difficulty finding those colors and defining them well. Whereas if you have a white layer underneath it on a transparent background, so if I show you this one, there you go. This is the transparent background that I choose to use as my page. But this image is also transparent, except for the fact that I put a white background underneath it. So this again can be used quite easily with the add the line tool. So go to the effects and uh, go to the outline and I would go on here to get my options. I don't want black. Using black on that would look completely wrong so I want to use the white. Now if I do my pixels, here we go, get the white border, get them so they're touching so I can get one complete outer line which is pretty good. Look at my layer panel, see what I've got. Go there and go merge the visible. There we are, it's merged. Come up to here and go for a duplicate. Tap on the lower one. Go for my solid color again, but this time it's black. And then I can add my outside line. And there we are. That is how you can use it. It's quite easy to do once you get the hang of it. If you want to do something similar for words and things like that, you can actually type directly into the program. It's got an artistic font fit and normal writing font type 
section. This is the artistic one and it will be able to access the fonts that you have on your iPad or your computer. I've just had a look on my computer and Affinity Designer is available for both Windows, Mac and the iPad. The normal price of it in euros is $54.99 for the Mac or Windows and $21.99 for the iPad. At the time of making this recording, it's on half price for another couple of days. Now, if you're in the market for a new piece of software, I can recommend this one as in a fully functioned piece of software. It is a viable alternative to Adobe Illustrator and even at the full price is considerably cheaper and there are no subscriptions to be had. You just buy it and you use it. That is my kind of software. Now, it has to be said that if you're going to use it to its full capacity, you will need to put some time in to learn it. But alternatively, you can do what I do and just learn the bits that your other software does not do. In this one, you can draw in either vector format or you can draw in raster format. You can do all the text functions that you could possibly want to use. You will have Boolean paths. You have advanced masking tools and selection tools. You have bucket fills. You have brushes that you can make. I mean, to be honest, if you can't do what you need to do in this, it's because you haven't learned how to do it. It's not because the app can't do it. So have a look on the Affinity Designer website and see what you think. I'm not sponsored by them. I bought the software myself. I have no vested interest in you either buying it or not buying it. My only interest in Affinity Designer is being able to do things that I need to do. So there we are. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you again soon. Take care now.